Greetings! It is I, Tentus Nair of Jacobin, Lord and Emperor of the Jacobin Empire, and welcome! It is time to continue my discussion on the Shadowrun role-playing game system. Alright, we last left off, we've been talking about some of the world-building kind of things, where we talked about your lifestyles of your characters. Let's talk about karma. Karma is an important thing because there is no experience point system in Shadowrun, there is no leveling system. What you're going to get is karma. Karma is your character's way of measuring how much experience they have gained for the various actions they have done. Now, this isn't everything you do. Just going out and, like, cooking a meal isn't earning karma. Karma is earned through the experience they get on runs, on adventures, on the various quest lines and various things that your GM has them going on. And the levels of accomplishment they get along the way will determine the amount of karma that they'll be earning. You're going to look to having significant contributions to the overall plotline, storyline, and success of the adventure in order to earn your karma. Granted, this isn't the only way to get yourself some karma. Various activities you can do, such as great role-playing, being humorous in character, being smart or strong in character can also earn you karma. Effectively, if you push the role-playing aspects of the game or the game plot along in certain ways without causing harm to the overall game, you can earn some karma from this. So, let's dive into the ways you can earn karma first. The first and most major way is when you complete a adventure, a run. Now, this isn't every session. That's an important part of this entire thing. And it might not be every run either, because we have to consider a single adventure might have multiple runs to it. You're going to have to look at the overall adventure arc that your game master has planned out at this point in time. You might have multiple adventures at the course of your game, but the single adventure you're on at the end of that is when you get your karma rewards. So we have to wait until the end to complete everything, then we get it. And for completing it, you always get karma for completing it. You only lose one, but you just get that one as a basis of, I've completed the adventure. Now, if you've completed enough tasks within the adventure, basically about 75% of the objectives that you had, you get a karma then. That means you were successful on your adventure. Completing it's one thing. Completing it successfully is an entirely another problem that you might face. And you can get karma for, of course, completing it that way. If the adventure itself is particularly challenging, uh, had a lot of danger, death, problems going on, and you walked away, in generally speaking, maybe you don't actually have to walk, but it means you effectively walked away from it successfully, your GM could give you an extra one that way, that you proved yourself worthy of living through this. Now, if your character stayed in, well, character the entire time, your GM could award you one experience, your GM could have warn you one karma. If you had excellent role playing above and beyond, staying within character, doing that very well, your game master could award you two. The important part about this reward is that your game master should look to the overall role playing level of your group. If your group is a lot of people that aren't really big and great on role playing, judge that level rather than their own level for determining what is staying in character, what's above and beyond, and excellent. Now, if your character is particularly brave, you can get one karma. If you are downright heroic, two. And the important thing to note here, this isn't stupidity. Courage is one thing, but acting stupidly and throwing yourself into things is another entire thing differently. You won't get rewarded for just chucking yourself into danger with no real reason or rhyme. If you are going into a dangerous situation and you are being the proper level of... You're just doing it because there's a good reason behind it, because it is a heroic thing to do, then yes, you're getting that karma. There is limitations here. Again, it's depending on the situation for the actions. Similarly, being smart. If you come up with a great plan or some kind of uh, idea that sh helps push the story along and push the mission along and help everyone out, you can get a karma. If that plan is particularly devious, devious or ingenious, you get two. If your character was doing things to help push the plot forward, 
then you can get one or two. And in particular, you might aim to get two if one of your characters basically sets up or pushes forward a subplot you were planning without any input from you as a GM. So basically means that my player front over there, he sets up this subplot I was planning and I have to do no prompting from him to do it. Bam, he's pushed me in a way that I want to. He gets the extra karma. Now, the right skill at the right time can get you one karma. And I don't mean just like, let's say here, I bought a lock pick that's an auto lock or an auto soft for lock picking and I have to open a lock right now. No, a good example would be you're at the end of an alley. You seem trapped. There's oncoming enemies coming in. You manage to somehow spot a door that was sort of hidden under some garbage and you run over to it. Pick the lock, allowing all your friends to rush inside as you close it and hopefully then escape from the bad guys, keeping yourself separated. Right skill at the right time. It's situational that the skills that you have, the items you have, play into a way to enhance you and allow you to have success. The final way that you can earn karma is, of course, through your acting. And this can come in two forms. If while in character, I fill everybody in the room with laughter very often, or just rolling laughter that's in character, that's appropriate char in character actions, I can get one for just adding humor to it, as long as it doesn't detract from the game. Similarly, drama. If you make people feel sad and depressed about the things that are going on with you, or you fill them with emotion that may be a little more negative, you're adding drama to it. These can also earn you it. Traditionally, with all these rewards, you will earn four to five karma average. Because remember, each character, whoever's the best at these, are sort of earning these, and you're not going to earn everyone every adventure. The maximum you should get is ten. You have to remember when it comes to rewarding karma. You don't want too little, you don't want too much. Too little, you don't feel like you're progressing very fast at all. You don't get that experience that seems to be experiencedly increasing your skills, your tributes, etc. On the other hand, if you have too much, they're going to get too powerful too quickly and they're going to feel like they can overcome everything. So when we start looking at using our karma to improve our characters, we're going to improve our skills, our tributes, and another number of special abilities. These special abilities are abilities of like spells and things that s s magicians have, or abilities that a technomancer might have. These are the critical things that you'll be using karma to increase to you will increase in between adventures. An adventure is complete, I have some time, before the next adventure is, I'm increasing my skills, attributes, etc. with my karma. This is my downtime, the time in between my big adventures, my big runs that I'm relaxing a little bit, improving myself, making myself better. Now, during this downtime, there are some advancements I can only get one of. Granted, this is only during this downtime. The longer the downtime, if I would have, let's say, more than a month of downtime, there are times that I could get multiple advancements. But normally, certain advancements, only once during the entire time, others are varied. We're going to look at some of those advancements now and talk about how you determine when you would advance them and when you wouldn't. Now we dive into improving your skills first. We want to talk about skills. During a downtime, I can only learn one new skill. That's all I have time and effort to dedicate myself to is one new skill to add to my list. On the other hand, I could have advancements in the various other skills and abilities I have. In, in this case, I could improve whatever for however much karma I have. There is a caveat though when it comes to these skills. I could still only increase them by one rank per skill per downtime. That means I have five skills, I want to improve them all by one, I can do that during my downtime. Now granted, certain skills might require me to do some kind of practice or something, like if I'm improving my pistols, maybe I'm spending some of my downtime going to the firing range and practicing, improving that ability. But then some other times during it, maybe I want to improve some athletics, so I go out jogging. Little things like that, that I'm balancing out all my stuff during my downtime to increase the skills. And of course, that one new one which I'm dedicating a lot of time and effort to to get that first rank because it does require a little bit more effort is an important part of this. Now, extra long downtimes, longer than a month, which could occur, these amounts of time may allow you to increase things by more than one rank. This is going to be GM's prerogative. 
just like technically speaking, any skill that I'm learning or improving, it's going to be GM's prerogative whether I can do that or not. If I'm within a certain amount of downtime and I want to increase these four skills and I can't give a good excuse as to this one why I would improve it and my giving an excuse of what my balancing of time would be doesn't give anything, maybe I don't have time to go to the shooting range with all working all the other skills, then why am I improving pistols? GM can say, I call you on that one, you can't do it. So you have to have some reason, some reasonableness. Maybe I was using pistol skill a lot in my last adventure, and that's why I'm improving it. Things like that, that make sense as to why we're improving all these things, or gaining them. So let's talk about improving skills. So you have your, of course, your active skills, your skill groups, your knowledge and language skills. You can increase and improve any of these over the course of your downtime. Active skills themselves, you could learn a new one, improve it. It will cost you four karma to learn a new one of these. So we're supposed to start with, we're learning a new active skill for karma. A skill group, I need 10 karma to get a new skill group. And granted, that gives me a one in every skill within that skill group. So it's four for a single skill, 10 for a skill group. A knowledge skill or a language skill is two to learn a new one of. And we have to remember, we can only add one new one per downtime. All of these have their karma costs, have their limitations to increasing them. That makes sense to them. But that's it for today. So I talked about karma, what it is, how you gain it, and I started talking about some of the uses of it. I started talking about using it to improve your skills. In the next episode, we're going to dive deeper into it now that we talked about learning new skills. We're going to talk about improving the skills you have. Then we'll talk about attributes, the other things you can spend karma on, and we might even reach talking about being a GM and Shadowrun a little bit. We might reach that point in time. But I hope you're having a great day. If you have any great stories about Shadowrun, about cool things you did that earned you some extra karma, please just leave them in the comments below. But until the next time, I bid you farewell.